Thank you. That concludes topical questions. The next item of business is a statement by Keith Brown on update on the management of transgender individuals within prison custody. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. I call on Keith Brown. Up to 10 minutes, Cabinet Secretary. Yeah, thank you, Presiding Officer. There has been, of course, significant attention on the management of transgender prisoners over the course of the last week, and I'd like to take this opportunity to update Parliament on what we have done and what we will be doing. Before doing so, I would want to acknowledge the victims in these cases. We should never forget the victims of crime. I am sure that is true of everybody in this chamber. And in that regard, I was very uh, impressed by the comments made by our contributor uh, at Time for Reflection, who said that we should focus on what really matters and recognise the unique worth of each individual. I am very conscious of the importance of maintaining public confidence in the justice system, and for that reason, I am keen that that discussion around this issue is as calm and founded on fact as possible. The things that we say in here have real impacts on people, and in the context of the criminal justice system, these are often very vulnerable people. We must not allow the legitimate questions that are being asked to fuel the view that trans women somehow pose an inherent threat to women when that is not the case. What is important is the crime that they have committed and the risk that they pose to other prisoners, to staff and indeed themselves. We have said this before and I will say it again. We are talking about a very small number of people. Transgender people in the prison estate account today for roughly 0.27 of the entire prison population. That equates to around 20 people out of 7,367 prisoners. It changes, obviously, on a regular basis. And as of today, uh, we have around 17 uh, trans women, the majority of whom are kept in the male estate. Uh, of course, in addition to that, on Sunday, it was announced by the Scottish Prison Service they are doing a further deep dive into those circumstances. By its very nature, the prison population as a whole has a significant number of people of all genders that represent a risk to others, and we must recognise and commend the professionalism and the very real expertise of the prison service in managing those complex, high-profile and challenging individuals within their care and in keeping others safe. The existing SPS process applies equally to the arrangements within which the SPS make decisions about transgender prisoners. Their gender identity and gender reassignment policy, adopted in 2014 in dialogue with the relevant stakeholders, including criminal justice and equalities organisations, envisaged as a general rule uh, seeing individuals being admitted to prisons that accord to their gender identity and subject to an individualised risk assessment. This has not changed recently, nor has it been impacted by the recent Gender Recognition Reform Bill passed by this Parliament. Just to repeat that, this has not changed recently, nor has it been impacted by the recent Gender Recognition Reform Bill passed by this Parliament. In terms of the policy in Scotland, there is no automatic right for trans women to serve a sentence in a female prison, or indeed for a trans man to be in the male estate. <coughs> The prison service retains the ability to place people in a prison which may not correspond to their identified gender. Instead, they make these decisions based on a rigorous and robust individualised risk assessment, taking account of all relevant factors, including the safety of the individual and of other prisoners and of staff. No transgender prisoner will be placed in the general population, either male or female, without that risk assessment. It is a long-standing position of the Scottish Government and the SBS that we do not comment on individual cases. This is, however, very challenging to sustain when there is substantial public debate and concern around a particular case. And with this in mind, and in the context of everything that has already been said around two cases that were reported in the media last week, I need to make the following points. At the time that either of these cases were brought to the public attention, SPS had not taken a decision about the future placement of the individuals concerned. The process of considering these cases was still underway. It should also, or I should also offer reassurance that during the period of risk assessment of the prisoner convicted of rape that had been admitted to HMP Corton Vale, the individual was segregated from the rest of the prison community. This was done in accordance with the prison service's established policy and practice. While the assessment was in progress, the decision was taken by the SPS that the individual should be transferred to the male estate. SPS was, of course, aware of ministers' views. It would be, frankly, bizarre if they were not aware of ministers' views. But it remained an operational decision for the SPS based on the information available to it. 
I should also make clear, given this issue has been raised, that the decision to initially accommodate this prisoner in HMP Cornton Vale while the risk assessment was done was made without ministerial involvement, nor indeed awareness, and in line with existing procedures. The other individual identified in the media was in and remains in the male estate. And neither of the cases that have been highlighted arose from any change to Scottish Government legislation or policy or any change to the SPS's risk assessment procedure that has operated in recent years. They arose from the specific circumstances of each case. And we have acknowledged fully the concerns that have been raised in respect of these cases, and we have responded swiftly. Given the public concern around these cases, it is right that SPS has acted to bring absolute clarity to the position. And on Sunday, I released a statement confirming that measures that will be taken pending the outcomes of two reviews. The first of these is SPS's current policy review of the management of trans prisoners, which has been undertaken in dialogue with the Scottish Government and other stakeholders. A consultation exercise was undertaken during 2022 with interested parties, including women and other prisoners and staff. The draft revised policy will be independently assessed by experts in women affected by trauma and violence. The review is expected to be completed in the coming months and we will ensure that Parliament is kept informed given the strong interest there is in this issue. SPS are also now undertaking an urgent lesson learns review in relation to the case of Isla Bryson with any learning to be applied immediately to existing transgender cases in the prison estate and any coming into custody. That review will report to the SPS Chief Executive, Executive at the end of this week, and I will write to the Criminal Justice Committee to update on the outcome of this next week. The timescales for any subsequent action will depend on the findings. Until these reviews are complete, no transgender person already in custody with any history of violence against women, including sexual offences against women, will be moved from the male to the female estate. In addition, no newly convicted or remanded transgender prisoner with any history of violence against women will be placed in the female estate. For clarity, this definition includes any history of violence, and violence including sexual offences. It is felt that following through with robust risk assessment and taking account of all relevant factors, there are still exceptional circumstances in particular cases that will require the approval of ministers. This is not dissimilar to the situation which was announced last week in England and Wales. The Prison Service will seek ministerial approval for these particular cases, which will not change the general position that decisions on the management and accommodation of prisoners within the prison estate have been and will continue to be operational matters for the Scottish Prison Service. This is in keeping with the delegated authority under which the Prison Service operates and in line with the public interest in this matter. These arrangements will allow for exceptional circumstances to be considered and agreed whilst the reviews are in progress. It is right that the actions that we have taken will continue to ensure that we respect and protect the rights of trans individuals, wherever they are in society, including within our prisons, and that we continue to consider and protect the safety of all prisoners and staff. In conclusion, the actions that I have announced on which the SPS are progressing aim to provide immediate assurance in the context of the public concern raised by the two recent cases. The outcome of the reviews being progress will ensure that any immediate lessons are learned from the issues that have been identified by these cases, and that the wider review of the prison service's current policy on the management of trans prisoners and the subsequent application of this policy take account of relevant factors, including input from experts in women affected by trauma and violence. Ultimately, it is vital that future decisions about the location and management of prisoners continue to be based on thorough risk assessment drawing on the expertise and input of relevant professionals with the priority of ensuring that all individuals uh, that work uh, in our prisons and that people in the care of our prison staff are kept safe. This has always been and will always be the absolute focus of the Scottish Prison Service. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we will move on to the next item of business. I would be grateful of all members who wish to ask a question where to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call Russell Finlay. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, they say a week is a long time in politics. Well, only six days ago, I asked Keith Brown about a double rapist in a women's prison, and he stood right there and backed the decision to send this sex offender to Conton Vale. Less than 24 hours later, Nicola Sturgeon was forced into a humiliating U-turn, and the rapist was rightly 
removed. So what I want to know is this. Now that Keith Brown tells us today that ministers had no awareness of this rapist's move to Cotton Vale, will he explicitly state that none of his officials had prior knowledge? And will he publish a detailed timeline of these critical events, including all correspondence? Thank you. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, first of all, to say that uh, what we've just said uh, and the assurance, the further assurance that was provided over the weekend does not of itself say that any different decisions would be made by the Scottish Prison Service in relation to those two cases than have been made. The, the changes which uh, have been announced in terms of the public assurance that it's Sunday does not change the Scottish uh, Prison Service's procedures. In relation to further information, I am pretty sure this is going to be discussed both in this chamber and in this Parliament's committee. I've mentioned already I'm writing to the committee. I've written to the committee today and I'm writing to the committee against next week. In the meantime, I'm happy to look at the request which Russell Finlay has made. And as far as is possible, I'm happy to provide the information, if I can, that he's asked for. Katie Clark. As the Cabinet Secretary says, we are talking about a small number of people. The current policy was devised in 2014 without the experiences and interests of women being taken into account. Will the Cabinet Secretary now withdraw this 2014 policy, put a hold on transfers and give an undertaking that there will be a full scrutiny of the draft revised policy, including a debate in this chamber? Cabinet Secretary. Well, just on the last point that Katie Clark uh, raises, it's not for me to schedule the business of this Parliament, but of course members are able to ask for that debate if that's what uh, the Parliament wishes to have. And just to say, in relation to the policy, ensuring that the policy, a very legitimate point, takes account of the interests of women, and in this case particularly women prisoners. I can say that there has been already that consultation. I think I confirmed this last week as well. Um, I am also aware of the responses to that consultation, both concerns raised and um, other aspects of that response. If it's possible for me to uh, not breach any confidentiality in providing that information, which is quite granular information about the cases raised, then I would certainly do that. But I'm happy now to give that assurance uh, to Katie Clark that the scheduled review, which has been impacted, of course, is, of course, by the pandemic, is now at the stage of having to be considered both by uh, legal services to make sure it uh, fits into the legal framework and also being discussed with the trade unions involved. You may have heard from the General Secretary of the SPOA today on this issue. Those are the two remaining parts uh, to that review. Those will be carried out and we will bring forward the review in due course and of course it's then up to Parliament should it wish to decide to debate those uh, findings. Audrey Nicholl to be followed by Rachel Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me, uh, with Phil Fairley, Mr Phil Fairley, the Scottish Secretary of the Prison Officers Association, who said this morning that, and I quote, the prison service is best placed to make those decisions? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I, I do. I, I have, uh, as I've said before, complete confidence in the prison service's ability to deal with these operational matters. Uh, given the public concern over these recent cases, I think it was right to bring absolute clarity to the position and therefore the position that's been set out to achieve that. I think there are a number of other interesting quotes from the General Secretary as well, uh, to the extent how he says that the system has worked extremely well, providing safety for uh, prisoners and for prison staff, for whom he has obviously a particular responsibility. And I think it would be useful for people to look, those who are very concerned about the safety of prisoners, women and others, to look at the comments of Phil Fairley uh, in the interview that he conducted today, and they would seek, I, I, and I think, find some real reassurance about the processes which are being followed. Rachel Hamilton to be followed by Rona Mackay. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Ministers intervened and overturned the decision to send double race, rapist Isla Bryson to a female prison. Yet, an equally violent sex person, Katie Dolotovsky, was sent to Court and Vale last year with no questions asked. It seems the First Minister has abandoned her self-ID policy for prisons. Or is it just the case that women's safety and dignity only matters to the SNP when it makes front-page news? With a First Minister that says women's concerns are not valid, valid and red flags for other single-sex services such as women's domestic shelters, does the Cabinet Secretary still back the principle of gender self-ID? Cabinet Secretary. I do support the principle of gender uh, self-ID. And can I say, I just said it actually to Rachel Hampton, presumably she doesn't believe me when I tell her that the decision was not overturned. The decision was taken by the Scottish Prison Service as to where I... 
as to where Ayala Blair was uh, taken to in terms of the male estate. That was a decision taken by the prison service. It wasn't taken by ministers. It's really hard to proceed on the basis of a calm and considered debate on these things if the facts are misrepresented in that way. So I do have confidence in the way that the prison service has conducted these, and I do believe in gender self-ID. Rona Mackay to be followed by Pauline McNeill. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary clarify if any legislation is needed to implement any changes in policy direction following the review, or indeed if any legislation has an impact on the review? Cabinet Secretary. I will just to say, of course, that the, any further action will be determined uh, on the outcome of the wider policy review, and any legislative changes that are required will be taken forward if that is the case. Uh, in the ordinary course of these things. I should say, though, that the Scottish Prison Service policies have in no way been changed or impacted by the recent passing of the Gender Recognition Reform Bill, which in any event, I think, as most of us know, is not yet in force. Pauline McNeill to be followed by Gillian Martin. Why was the convicted rapist referred to in the statement's destination changed from a Berlin prison to Court and Vale prison in the first place? And why has the government repeatedly defended the SPS risk assessment as being robust uh, when clearly it was not robust because, as previously mentioned, these risk assessment rules allowed a paedophile to go to Court and Vale, and ministers knew it because I raised it directly with them. If there are any lessons to be learned here, does the Cabinet Secretary agree that it is also the Government that should learn some lessons to include the safety of women when they are looking at prison policy? Cabinet Secretary. Can I say that in the first point that was raised by Paul McNeill as to why was it changed from the person mentioned going from Barlinney to uh, Corton Vale? That is not a decision for ministers. Uh, we are not involved in that. And despite what said earlier on, the fact you would not be aware of that. That's the, between the court service and the prison service. It was also entirely consistent with the Scottish prison service policy from 2014 that that would be the prison, the, the women's estate, the women's estate, which is uh, the woman identified. Uh, as a woman. That, that would be the normal practice. But at that point, as the member I'm sure will be aware, and many of our prisons have both male and females in the estate. That's true of a number of prisons, for example, Pullman, Edinburgh, Greenock uh, and Grampian. Um, but that, that is only pending, and, and as the, again the General Secretary pointed out, segregated, no interaction with the general population, pending that assessment and then the placing, as happened in this case, uh, in the male, male estate. Uh, I, I can't comment on further individual cases which are mentioned. I'm happy to discuss uh, offline if it's possible to do that with uh, Polly McNeill and the other case that she mentioned. But it is the case, as I've demonstrated in relation to the wider review that's been taken uh, forward at this stage, that the interests, the views of women in particular, have been taken forward, have been listened to, have been canvassed, uh, and will form a part of the consideration of that wider review. And I think that is just as it should be. Julian Martin to be followed by Alex Cole Hamilton. Thank you, President Officer. When the media takes hold of an issue, it can be difficult for us and the general public to know the factual detail behind the stories that make the headlines. And given the confidential nature of the information, difficult for those in authority to answer those claims directly. Yet risk assessments for placement of transgender people in prison have been in place in years in Scottish prisons. So the public need to be reassured that the SPS risk assessment process for the placement of prisoners is sufficient to protect the prisoner and others in the particular unit that they're placed in. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if, as part of the proposed SPS policy review, there will be a review of these risk assessment processes and how will Parliament be able to scrutinise these reviews? Cabinet Secretary. I think, first of all, uh, the, the public should be reassured about the processes which are currently in place. And in that, I would regard the uh, track record of the prison service uh, as demonstrating exactly how effective they are. And once again, to go to those that have to work on the front line in relation to this, their representatives, trade union representatives, saying they've been used to doing this over many years, do it very successfully. It's one of many challenges, of course, uh, which they face. And just on the point that Julie Martin raises as to whether the review uh, of, will, will take into account that assessment, the wider review will look at the management of transgender prisoners as a whole. It will take in every element of that, and in, in order that the Parliament, of course, can have its say, we will update the committee once that work has been finalised. Alex Cole-Hamilton to be followed by Colette Stevenson. 
Thank you very much indeed, uh, Presiding Officer. And can I say uh, from the outset, the Scottish Liberal Democrats believe that anyone who has committed sexually violent crimes and who pose a risk to women should not be housed with women on the female prison estate. That's a view shared by both Scottish Trans and Rape Crisis Scotland. This will have been a very triggering and bruising episode for survivors of sexual offences and for the trans community. This is dented public trust in prison safeguarding as well. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if he is confident that the outcomes of these reviews will be enough to restore that public trust and what further steps his government plans to take to reassure people and to heal the divisions in our society? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I thank Kelly Cole Hamptons for his question and on the last uh, point. I think, uh, first of all, to make sure that we can discuss these things in a civilised way with reference to the facts is very important in taking some of the heat out of this. Uh, I recognise that. I recognise also what he says about the position of the Liberal Democrats in relation to the safety of women in prisons and also he cites I think it was Scottish Women's Aid and uh, Rape Crisis Scotland, an uh, organisation that was being demonised uh, until very recently, uh, wrongly in my view. These are perfectly legitimate concerns and it's why we took forward uh, those uh, initiatives. I would say that I do believe that that trust um, is well placed just now within the prison service, but of course it's right that you should continually monitor, especially such sensitive processes. And that's exactly what's happening in terms of the review. So hopefully that review will provide further reassurance to the public and to the organisations whom he rightly cites uh, about the effectiveness of the process processes that we have within our prisons. I call Colette Stevenson to be followed by Maggie Chapman. Thank you, President Officer. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that it is crucial that the experience of prison staff is vital in dealing with this issue and their views, as well as their safety and well-being, should be a consideration in the review? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I do agree with that, and I think I've already said that the process that the review is following is now in entering uh, into the stage of the consultation with trade unions, and it's already heard uh, from other groups, uh, as I've mentioned. And we should never just accept that that's what prison officers are there to do, and they should take, if you like, what comes their way in terms of the risk which they're confronted with. They have to be consulted. I do draw a lot of comfort from what we've heard from representatives of prison staff about the way things are currently working. But of course, it's right as we go forward to review these processes that the views of prison staff, who also share some of that risk that's been described, are taken into account and listened to. I call Maggie Chapman to be followed by Jamie Green. I am struck by the line in, in the CABSEC statement that says we must not allow the legitimate questions that are being asked to fuel the view that trans women somehow pose an inherent threat to women when that is not the case. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware of recent data that shows an increase in attacks against trans people. Does he agree that the weaponising of trans prisoners by certain individuals will only serve to make trans people more vulnerable? And can he comment on how we can ensure that no prisoners are made less safe because of recent events? Well, I think on the last point, I think I've tried to describe how we uh, can try and uh, keep uh, prisoners safe. And of course, there's a heightened sense of that, as uh, Maggie Chapman will understand, among staff and those in our prisons just now because, uh, because of this. I think it's also true to say I agree. I made the comment myself about the fact uh, the position of trans women. Uh, and perhaps the best way to provide that reassurance is, as I've said already, to discuss these things in a calm way, which does take into account, really start from the position of how can we keep everybody safe? Now, it's perfectly legitimate for people to question whether we're doing that effectively or not. I think that we are. But I think if we can do that in such a way that recognises that the primary concern of us all is the safety of uh, prisoners, uh, all prisoners, and the safety of the staff concerned, then I think we can have uh, a debate which should not unnecessarily give rise to what Maggie Chapman rightly draws attention to, which is the increasing number of hate crimes or hate incidents against trans people, a very substantial increase, and we should always be mindful of that. I call Jamie Green to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware of an important but very pertinent amendment I had uh, passed and absorbed into the recent gender legislation, which placed a statutory duty on the government to report on the placement of transgender prisoners within the prison estate. Now, the SPS review was due last summer. We have no idea why that has been delayed, and frankly, its absence, I think, perhaps has not helped the current situation and the heat around this debate. Can I ask, irrespective of what happens to that recent legislation, will the government today commit to that reporting requirement in the spirit of transparency, and in my view, an ask which requires no legislation, but is a sensible and prudent ask of the government in light of recent events. Cabinet Secretary. 
I think, first of all, it's a, a sensible suggestion, but if the member will forgive me, I think I'll have the further discussion, one of which we're due to have tomorrow with the committee and see how the committee would best like that taken forward. But I have no uh, objection to the uh, in-principle point uh, that is made. I think, given the public interest, it's as well that as many people as possible are aware of all the facts. There are some very um, unfounded statements circulating, for example, on uh, social media. So I think the idea of further reporting, I've already mentioned the extent to which uh, I'm trying to keep the committee involved, having written to them today, writing again next week, the commitment after the reviews to go back to the committee. So the one next week will be about the short-term review that we'll report this week, and of course the wider review. Just to say on the point about the delay to the wider review, that was hugely impacted by COVID. And it is something which is taken very seriously. So I mentioned already, as well as the analysis and consultation which has taken place, we're now at the stage of the discussion with the trade unions and also with the uh, legal services to make sure that it's absolutely uh, as it should be. So that accounts for, and I do agree, by the way, that it would be more useful for us to have had that now, but the pandemic can't be wished away, and that's what's caused the delay. I call Susan McGregor to be followed by Pam Gozo. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I think we all agree it is important that human rights of all parties are considered and balanced in the placement of any prisoners. So can the Cabinet Secretary provide assurance that this will continue to remain at the core of considerations? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I, I'm absolutely happy to give that a reassurance. We have, uh, even if we wanted a different option, no option but to do that in any event. It's the right thing to do. So happy to provide that assurance that, um, it, for example, SBS are undertaking a rigorous human rights impact assessment as part of the wider policy. And whether it's the change which the UK government announced uh, last week or whether it's what we are talking about, the same regard for human rights has been incorporated in those statements. And I'm sure that will be the case going forward. I call Pam Gozo to be followed by Neil Bibby. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Cabinet Secretary, forgive me, but I'm struggling to understand how a male, whether considered a trans woman or not, that is charged with rape and or other sexual offences, is not considered a threat to female prison population. Yeah, here, here. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, was he fine with rapists being placed in female prisons until last week? Or was he unaware of such cases? And, uh, and therefore, not on top of his portfolio. Cabinet Secretary. Well, um, I've already explained uh, to the member that the person that is being talked about here was transferred to Corton Vale in accordance with existing policy into a segregated unit where there was not interaction uh, with the rest of the population. It's also true to say, as I've mentioned, that we have male and females in a number of the prison estates that we have uh, here in Scotland. And yes, I do believe that the assessment the assessment of that threat or that risk is carried out by people that are far more expert in this than... I don't think I, 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 I think we need to hear the intervene. Cabinet Secretary's response. Thank you. I, I'm convinced that those people are far more expert in making that judgment than I would be, or indeed that the member would be. That's where the uh, threat and risk should be properly assessed. But of course, as I've said, we should always continue to review that and to improve that as much as we can, and that is the purpose of the wider review. I call uh, Neil Bibby to be followed by Michelle Thompson. Thank you, President Officer. We have heard the issues in relation to trans prisoners in the women's estate. The Cabinet Secretary has described some of the circumstances following risk assessment where a trans prisoner is more appropriately held in the men's estate. In that circumstance, can I ask what protections are in place for women's pris women prison officers within the men's estate? And specifically, can he confirm the policy would not require a women prison officer to carry out intimate searches on such a prisoner. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I, I can say, first of all, that the processes of the Scottish Prison Service do take into account that eventuality and also to say that really, as well as the risk assessments which I've discussed so far in relation to, in this particular case, trans women, risk assessments are day and daily part of the business of the prison service. On the day that this um, story broke last week, I was visiting the prison service, which was uh, around a presentation about how they manage the different serious organised crime groups within prisons, which is a huge task, much more so than it has been in the past. And we now have serious organised crime individuals in every single prison in Scotland. So the risk assessment, whether it's a, a trans woman that's in the male estate or in the female estate or a trans man, or other individuals, the risk assessment is carried out uh, in accordance with what the risk that that individual may present, and they are placed according to that. Happy to provide further information on the training in relation to the other issue which Neil Bibby's addressed, but I can assure him that there's a risk assessment undertaken for everybody entering the prison system. 
Uh, I call Michelle Thompson to be followed by Stephen Kerr. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Now, the Cabinet Secretary has mentioned consultation with women prisoners on a number of occasions. Can he highlight today how many specifically were consulted with, uh, what they were asked, what methodology was used, and so on? And if he's not able to do that, will he agree to publish it? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, I will first of all check in terms of any confidentiality um, agreements that were maybe entered into when those people were surveyed and asked about the, uh, the, the questions and the review that was undertaken. But I um, am happy to provide as much information as is possible to uh, Michelle Thompson. Um, as I say, I will check on those facts first and see what information can be passed on. But just to say, it was a substantial number of, in this case, women that were consulted on this, uh, provided their views. I'm not, I'm not certain of the basis on which those views were provided, whether it's a, a confidentiality requirement or not, but happy to provide as much information as I'm able to do. And I call Stephen Kerr. The Cabinet Secretary, I think, is straining credulity to suggest that nothing has changed when everyone can see what has happened. But doesn't it all just go to show, the events of the past week go to show, that the amendment put forward to the GRR bill by Russell Finlay and Michelle Thompson should have been accepted by the government and not dismissed as unnecessary when clearly events show it is necessary. Cabinet Secretary. I think the concerns which underlay that amendment were not dismissed uh, at all. And in fact, that is demonstrated by the acceptance of a of, of a competent amendment which was lodged by Gillian Martin, which had the effect, for example, of allowing the police service, should they have concerns about an individual applying for a GRC, to be stopped in that process by putting in place a prevention order. So those concerns were legitimate. I think they were uh, agreed by this Parliament in a piece of legislation that was passed by a very large majority in this Parliament, by representatives of all parties. And I just wish that democratic process has been respected elsewhere. Uh, thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes the statement. Point of order, Russell Finlay. Thank you very much. Um, the Cabinet Secretary relied on comments made in his answers uh, from an SPOA official. Uh, but I understand this official is also an SNP politician. Can you give me some guidance around the declaration of interest for members? Um, I, I thank the member for his uh, point of order. Um, on the basis that the person referred to is, I understand, an SP, Scottish Prison Service official, Prison Officers official, I am not entirely sure that it would be for the Cabinet Secretary to go into the CV of the person concerned. Um, I, 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 I think that would be a matter. I think that would be a matter for uh, uh, others to do uh, if they wished, and the member has put that on the record. Thank you. There will be a short pause before we move on to the next item of business.